Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. If you remember about, uh, well, early September, I reviewed this knife. This is the 9301 by Sanran Mew. It's a very thin knife. It's a backspring slip joint style knife. And uh, no detent stops at all. Just open and close it. And uh, it was a good little knife that I reviewed. Well, it's full size in terms of length, but uh, yeah, it's a little knife, light knife, uh, a very functional knife for, you know, urban kind of use, uh, certainly urban office EDC kind of carry. It's got its place in the world. And uh, after I reviewed this, uh, I noticed that San Remu had two other styles of knife that were made very, very much the same way. So I went and got those. And what we have here, let's do them in order. What we have here is the 9305, which is a bit of a drop point blade, a little bit of a swedge, same thin style. And by the way, this knife, the 9301, also comes in a black finish like this. And this knife also comes in, you know, your regular satin finish as well. So you've got you know, a nice little knife, same kind of pocket clip, same thin construction. So we're going to take a look at this today, the 9305, but I'm also going to talk about the 9306 in this same video because there's so many similarities. Oh, I'm going to do two knives in one video. Hopefully I can fit it all in. Uh, this knife, you know, it's got a little bit different area at the end of the handle, the pommel, well, not really pommel area, the end of the handle here. And the blade shape is a bit different as well, but there's some small differences in the handle shape too. But it's that same thin style construction, um, the exact same total knife length. Uh, in fact, all three of these have got the exact same down to uh, a tenth of a millimeter. <laughs> They've got the same length, same thickness, some very same sizes. So. We'll talk about these two together at the same time today. So stay tuned right after this one commercial break. Only one is allowed per video. Uh, we will come back and do the full reviews on both these knives. Keep watching. Here we go. Here's the three knives. I don't know what they did with 9302 and 9303 and 9304. I don't know if those are ever going to come out. I don't know if those are designs that they were working on and then they gave up on them or not. Whatever it happened, I don't know. Some subtle differences between these. These two guys have got identical pocket clips. The 9301's got a different kind of pocket clip. Quite functional, quite good. Looked okay. But mostly it's the same. You see the rings there? Those are all the same. The construction's the same. Pinned with these brass pins. Uh, collars on the screws. Uh, Non-slipping pivot pin screws because it's nice finish on the other side. And they've all got the uh, San Remu logo there, the character logo instead of the word San Remu or the letter San Remu. And that usually is because of knives that were designed for the um, domestic market. And uh, so the internal market in, in China. Let's do our size comparison. We usually compare these things to an Ontario rat. So I just flick that open. And let's line up the pivot pins. And since they're all the same size, I'm just going to leave that one sitting there. You can see, yep, yeah, it's a shorter knife. It's a smaller knife. It's not a big folder. And this is a full size folder indeed. It's not a small knife by any stretch. Uh, so got something of an idea of uh, how that is. Actually, I was going to do this. I was going to see how big the cutting edge difference was. Not that much. Right around a quarter of an inch difference. So you got a quarter of an inch less uh, cutting length. Uh, you know, a little less than a centimeter difference. Lower than, than the uh, Ontario Rat. So let's take a look at these things. Uh, I won't do all the sizes right now. I'll do them later. Um, but there's, like I said, some sizes are the same. They're the same thickness on both of these guys. Actually, all three of them. We're going to put the other guy. There it is. This one's the same thickness as well. The same total length on all three of them. So that's very similar. 
uh, the same cutting edge length, which is kind of weird with the different style blades. You got the same cutting edge length. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the same kind of stuff here. One thing you're going to notice right away, and I think I've got four different cons on this knife. They're all pretty small, but this first one is a little more significant. Um, if you show, if you saw the unboxing video, you saw that you've got this very shiny copper look on all of these other parts that are here. Uh, especially on this black one, you could see no sort of gray silver except for the cutting edge. Everything else was either the brass or it was copper looking. Now, I've not carried these any more than I carry any other knife or use them, which means really they didn't get all that terribly much use. But you can see there's the back spring that was all copper before. You can't see a thing, single bit of copper on there now. You can see a little copper color right there on that on the ring. But when you turn it over, the face of it mostly gone. You can see a little copper in those edges there where your fingers don't rub very much. Right in there, you can see it on the inside. It's got that nice coppery color because my fingers can't touch that. Over here on this lanyard hole piece, yeah. And I didn't go rubbing it at all. This was just normal use. Basically, it's light use. I did some cutting. I did my tests. I did a bunch of cutting. The edge still has some sharpness to it. Uh, not not like it was originally, but, you know, it's not nice that that all rubs off. So if you really got your heart set on keeping that uh, coppery kind of color, you know, just know that it's not going to last. It's on there, and then it's gone. <laughs> so that goes for all three of these but let's talk about what else we have on here we've got a fairly nice knife I like that they're very thin which means they're easy to carry somewhere uh, they're not gonna you know protrude from a pocket very much um, the black coating on them it's okay it gets it shows some marks you can see some marks there already now, I haven't wiped this back down again to see if that'll easily wipe off, but uh, the black, I'm not liking as much because it, it just shows a little bit of wear a little bit too easily. I grabbed a bit of shop towel and just put a tiny bit of uh, denatured alcohol on it, and I was just rubbing the handle, and now look at it. That is, yeah, not good at all. And the original blotch that's right here that I tried to get rid of. Well, there's still some trace of it there. So, yeah. The coated version, I say don't buy the black coated version. Stick with the satin ones. I like the silver versions on all three of these uh, the best. You know, the black's not bad. Uh, the deep carry pocket clip, I wish it was right and left friendly. It's only right side friendly. It really doesn't make that much of a difference because it is a slip joint. And you know, you can deploy the blade with one hand with your thumb and close it with one hand if you're careful. You know, that's not bad. I'm not gonna do it with this hand right now because I don't want to put pressure right where my sore thumb is, but there's no left side thumb stud. Even though the pocket clip, if it stays where it is and there is no left side pocket clip, that's fine. I really do wish they would have put in thumb studs that were right and left. Now, it wouldn't make the knife too much thicker because they only stand out about the amount that these uh, pivot collars and pivot uh, screws do. So that's another little con. The uh, So what did I say? Two cons. The, the copper color wears off. There's no left uh, thumb stud. There's no left pocket clip. Uh, the coating is not the best on the black ones. And that's about it. <laughs> the rest is all good stuff. Let's go over the good stuff. Well, I like the blade shapes. You've got some good variety, some very different blade shapes. This is basically a straight back. This is a nice drop point with a bit of a swedge right there. You've got are very little protruding, just that thumb stud way at the back. So when you're slicing through things, it doesn't catch on stuff. So it's great for like a, an urban 
lunch knife, you know, to cut apart an apple or whatever. That works just great. They're all full flat grinds. They've all got sharpener toils that are a very good size. They're big enough that you're not going to sharpen into the plunge when you're sharpening the edge. So I really like the sharpener's toil. They're all fairly comfortable to hold. You know, they're not for hard work at all. It's just simply not what they're here for. Then you've got this blade shape. If you just see the tip there, it really looks like a spear point shape. But uh, I don't know, you might be tempted to sort of call it a bit of a sheep's foot style as well. Or maybe even a drop point. I don't know. Call it whatever you want. Just know that this is what it looks like. This one also has got a swedge up here. And nice long belly on this one. I like this one the best. This blade shape, just awesome for cutting. It just worked very, very well. Because you've got this much depth to go from the full thickness to the cutting edge, you know, it has a slower rate of, you know, decline. So this angle, this slice is better. It stays thin longer, you know, and I really, really like that a lot. The handles, you know, you've got a few different styles here. This one is just smooth all the way back. It's almost straight at the back, but not quite. It does have a bit of a, a dip and it sort of comes up just a little bit right at the end. And uh, this one, same kind of thing. It just starts to come up a little bit at the end. It's really, really hard to see. It almost is perfectly straight, but just not quite. But then on the belly side here, you've got this divider, sort of like a uh, finger toil area at the front and then for your other three fingers. So it did actually help me get a more comfortable grip than this one or this one. But these two are the best for grip. Uh, the 9301 is just, you know, it's more sleek, more small, which, you know, the smaller you get, you know, the little more difficult it is to really do what you want to do if you have to do something a little bit harder in the cutting. I really like the satin finish here with the, they did the sanding all in one direction. So nice look of green to it. The uh, satin finish on the blade looks really well done. The printing on the other side, I don't like printing on the plunge, but at least they didn't make it too big. Then you've got the really small stand, uh, look thing right there for the uh, date of manufacture, or year then month. And then the steel here, 8CR13 MOV on all three of these knives. All the edges are just slightly rounded, so the only sharp part is the sharp part. You've got a variety of uh, ends to these knives. If you take a look at this one, you've got a lanyard hole here made out of that uh, backspacer spring piece. That's all one piece all the way back up to here. This again, all one piece all the way back. And this one is very similar to this, except for uh, they put in a sleeve and, and crimped it to, to be the lanyard hole and made this a bottle opener. So does this work as a bottle opener? Yes, it worked. I've opened a couple bottles with it. You know, it's not super great as a bottle opener, but uh, yeah, you can open a bottle, no problem with that. And you still have your lanyard option right there. So this one, the 9306, I think is the best one of the bunch. Uh, before we go into the dimensions, let's see how well these things go into a pair of pants. And there's one, the last kind of con, they've got button screws on all this one sort of this one's got button screws but it didn't matter so that was fine because the way the pocket clip is designed but these two have got button screws that stick out a bit this one it's not so bad but this one it i don't know if it's a visual thing but it looks like it comes closer let's put this pair of pants down here and let's take a look it climbs over it's got a really nice tip and then it gets caught there so it didn't use flush screws and so it gets caught. This guy, it wants to climb over because it's the exact same kind of pocket clip. And let's pick that up there, just push it down. And this one, again, it got caught, but I can wiggle it and feed it in further and get it down. So that's the last con. 
So there's, there definitely are real cons. If you like pocket clips, uh, these, you know, if you can find replacement screws that work, that are flush screws, there you go. It was a little bit harder since I worked it down. Same on you, that's a mistake. You really do need to put in those flush body screws instead of button screws uh, for this pocket clip. But the tip of the screw, the pocket clip, I mean, it's done very well. I like that it's got the flat top. I got no hot spots in my pocket with it. It's just fine. And you know, just take the pocket clip off if you're just gonna put it inside your pocket, maybe inside a front jacket pocket, you know, because it's a nice thin knife. It hides really well and it does a good job. You can open it with a thumb stud or you can do the two hand opening if you want to. The spring tension here is pretty good. You have to push, you know, fairly hard before it starts to close. But once it, when it closes, it's not all free and loose or it doesn't have any spring tension pulling it down until you get almost closed, you know, right about. There you go. Once it's almost closed, then, you know, this spring takes over and pulls it all the way in. And same thing is true on all of them. The spring holds it closed quite well. If it starts to pull open, it just wants to stay closed. So it's a fairly safe knife in your pocket. It's got good looks and it works really well, but it definitely has some cons. Let's go over the sizes, dimensions, and that kind of information. And a little Stanley Fat Max will be on the screen when I do that. I'll try not to waste time. I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, and I did get a new video editing software. I'm still getting used to it. I might not put in all the measurements on the screen because it just takes so much extra time. And while I'm learning it, um, you know, that really slows down these early videos. And so I might not put all that in. Uh, specs, cutting edge sharpness. Uh, the 9305 has 150 on the best scale out of the factory. Uh, this guy had 165. 200 and less is considered good, so that's good. Um, the weight of the knife, the 9305, is 73 grams, 2.6 ounces. The 9306 is 75 grams, 2.65 ounces. So this extra steel up here made up that weight. The balance point on both of these is about halfway between the pocket clip and the pivot screw. So a little further back than I usually like, but that's not too bad. The blade length on the 9305 is 8.24 centimeters, 3.2. 244 inches and the 9306 is 8.39 centimeters 3.303 inches the blade thickness it's the same on both of these 2.03 millimeters and this guy was the same which is 79 and a half thousandths of an inch 0 0.0795 inches uh, the blade depth i'll put this one on this side here that's this measurement and i just went to, with the widest spot on both of these Blade depth on this guy is 2.03 centimeters. That's 0.799 inches. This is 2.26 centimeters, 0.89 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, uh, 0.38 millimeters, which is 14 and a half thousandths of an inch. This guy is 0.36 millimeters, which is 14 thousandths of an inch. Very thin behind the grind. This guy was very thin as well. That's one of the things that makes this a very good slicer. Let's do the grind angles. This guy is 18.3 degrees on one side, 21.1 degrees on the other side. This guy is 16 degrees on one side and 18.2 degrees on the other side. Not bad at all. For this thinness of a steel at the cutting edge at 8CR13, I'd probably do these at 18 degrees per side, up to 20. You, you just don't want to go too fine of an edge. Uh, it doesn't have enough steel to support it. Uh, now for the handle length, the handle length is the same on both of these guys, and that is 10.92 centimeters, 4.3 inches. The uh, grip area in here, it is well, the same on both of these as well, but about 10.4 centimeters, about 4.1 inches rounded. Now because you got rounded corners, so how do you measure how far it is? And the thickness, all three of these is the same, uh, 5.35 millimeters. 0.2105 inches, so a fifth of an inch thick. 
that's nice and small. The handle depth, this guy is 2.35 centimeters. It's right back here. That's 0.925. Actually, they're both the same. So just under an inch thick this way at the end of the handle. Uh, the knife depth when it's closed. Of course, this guy is going to be more than this guy. We have uh, 2.68 centimeters, 1.055 inches. This is 3.14 centimeters. That's 1.236 of an inch. And the total length of these knives is 19.51 centimeters. Oh, I didn't do the converter on the computer, what the actual numbers that is. What is that in inches? Now let's take a look. In inches, that is just a bit over seven and five eighths. Over seven and five eighths, just a little bit. So not bad at all. I like the sizes of these knives. This one's the same length as well. And they're great. How much do these knives cost? All of them are close to the same price, but the price that you can get it today, oh, I didn't write it down. I'll have to go look it up and I'll be right back with you faster than a flash. The price of these knives? Well, it depends on where you live. There's free shipping from AliExpress to most places in the world, except to Canada. Uh, and that's because Canadians don't like it when uh, our border services agency takes our knives away from us. And a lot of people, you know, they'll demand from the seller that they give the money back, even though it's not the seller's fault, not whatsoever the seller's fault. And, you know, they can't just absorb that kind of loss. You know, if CBSA takes, you know, a quarter of the knives that get shipped out, that can really, really hurt a business. So they charge shipping so that, uh, you know, if the Canadian who ordered the knife loses it to Canada Border Services Agency, and they should not. For slip joint knives, uh, Canada Border Services Agency won't keep these. Uh, they did take one of my slip joint knives and hold it for a month and a half, but they did ship it to me. Uh, they did let me get it uh, because slip joint knives are more than totally legal in Canada. There's no issue at all with these. So what are the actual prices? Well, in uh, in uh, American dollars, this guy is fifteen ninety two right now, and this guy is seventeen fifty two seventeen fifty two. Not bad at all. Free shipping, and that's from the San Remu store on AliExpress, not the San Remu online store. That's a different store. The San Remu store has got the highest rating. It's, I think it's a ninety nine point three percent satisfaction rating from customers. So. That's good. Uh, if you're in Canada, 2105 Canadian, 2316 Canadian, plus just under $7 shipping for any one of these. So the price is good. Um, the knife is good. It's a nice knife. Yeah, it's got a couple issues to it. Um, I'm going to try to find uh, flat screws that might work with this. Uh, it's going to be hard to find because I'll have to get the pitch of the screw the same, the same thread pitch and everything. Uh, and size. So pitch and size, you got to match. So maybe not. You're going to be hard pressed to find a knife that is this thin, that costs less than 20 US dollars, that has an over three inch blade. Now, I wish they would have made these just under three inches. That would have been uh, optimal because you don't need to have a really big knife when it's a slip joint. So there's that. Uh, the other good thing about these I didn't mention before is uh, because it comes back and you've got this uh, flat section coming out, when you are holding it, when it tries to close with your finger there, it's going to pinch on your finger with the flat, dull part. I like these. What do you think? Are you going to get one? If you do, please use my links down below. I do have an AliExpress uh, affiliate account, so I do earn a small commission if you use my links. So please consider using my links. Uh, that helps me out. Every little bit of income I can get uh, is helpful. So thanks again for watching my video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.